Hi everyone, this is a update uh, on my uh, experiments with the delayed lens effect in uh, transformers. And the um, last uh, video we had was uh, using a uh, coil on a core that uh, was wound in by Fowler. And uh, I found that uh, I was getting some good results uh, with that. Uh, we didn't need a very high impedance coil to get the same uh, delayed lens effect. Um, that started me thinking, why is this, what is, what is the difference in the Bifowler coil? And suddenly I was starting to think about the core itself. And here's a laminate core of a transformer here. There's many laminations in there. And with a utility knife you can uh, break these apart and separate all these little laminations like these here. And what I thought of doing, and I've thought of this some years back, over two years ago probably, is to actually uh, wind uh, enamel wire, magnet, magnet, <coughs> sorry, magnet wire directly on these laminations. So just turning them and just going around with the uh, wire. And that was uh, something I decided to do now. And I went ahead and I made this uh, special core here. It's all epoxied together now. I can't uh, take it apart. But basically you see there all the windings on it. So I wound the uh, magnet wire uh, very tightly on that all around each one of these laminations. There are four in there uh, of these single laminations with the uh, copper wound on it. And then I had my strands coming out on each side. They were longer than this. I've cut them off since. And uh, what I was going to do is to, you know, connect one in by Fowler and then the next one in, uh, you know, Tri Fowler and Quad Fowler and just try to see and to come to understand why, uh, you know, what, how the effect works and uh, if I keep adding more and more Fowlers, will I be able to drop the uh, frequency? And that's what I'm interested in, dropping the frequency down to where these lamination cores uh, uh, work better at. And it's closer down to 60 hertz or 50 hertz, if you want. Anyway, so that was the uh, mentality behind that. So when I put this under test, I soon noticed that it had nothing to do with the coil being in bi Fowler, tri Fowler, it didn't change a thing. But by winding these directly on the core, this core now is capable of, of giving the effect at 200 hertz. So that made me think of maybe it just has to do with the fact that the copper is delaying the magnetization in these laminations to sh change when the uh, sine wave is changing uh, in phase so that it would stall it, it would reduce it. Just like when you put a magnet uh, over a piece of copper, the magnet will slowly move. It's just, it's a delay for a magnetic field. So if you, the other thing that you could use, you could use aluminum. So then I thought, well, maybe I can put aluminum strips in between these, you know, one steel lamination, one piece of aluminum strip, one steel lamination, and on and on. And that made me think of, well, wait a minute, a rotor of a um, uh, induction motor is that actually made like that. It has steel lamination and then it's got aluminum in there, another steel lamination. And I believe that they are doing that to actually um, delay the, uh, the, uh, the magnetic field to just change instantly as the phase is changing. It just slowly changes. So I think that might be what the, uh, the effect is about. Um, anyways, so what I decided to do is I had a um, here I made a transformer. Uh, this is a shaded pole motor core, this round one that you see there. And uh, I wound uh, two coils on that. So this had like a shaft on both sides. I cut it with my grinder and then I wound two coils on there. Um, unfortunately I should have like put some 
sides on that thing but I'm really limited to the kind of work I can do on my boat and then these uh, coils here are actually actually uh, shaded pole motors as well that I had so these are two identical coils so this one here I'll be using as a primary for this setup and the idea here is this primary now is going to send its flux down uh, these uh, laminations here the transformer laminations that I salvage by the way this is all holding together with crazy glue uh, right here and and there and that's just inside this core on that side there so the magnetization from this coil here will work its way here and down here and then when it reaches this core here which is the induction motor rotor uh, it should slow itself down when it, sh it shifts you know back and forth as the alternating current happens and making this uh, coil here that has a load uh, delay and um, I'm quite sure it's working as I'm explaining it and uh, we'll put it under test and you can have a look and see so these two coils I wound them separate but I actually ended up just bridging them together so now they, they are in series and I have a uh, 10 ohm load there this comes to about 20 uh, millihenries the inductance here the inductance here is about a hundred and uh, 140 millihenries uh, on each one of these they are identical coils and um, on this coil here I'm just going to use it as a resonator where I've got a capacitor bank here that I've put together of a very specific value to get the best effect and I've got about 29 uh, uh, microfarads here uh, of capacitance, AC capacitance and that's, I'll, I'll, I'll connect that uh, capacitance just to this coil here and that's going to play around with the whole uh, you know effect here so right now if we look at our scope shot um, this is our voltage here and this is our current in the yellow and geez the light conditions are kind of bad here so I don't know how well you're gonna see that data I'll try to zoom in there a bit so we are at uh, 60 uh, Hertz and there's 508 millivolts going across our it's a 10 ohm resistor that I'm using this time here this is our shunt resistor so we have a 10 ohm here and we've got a 10 ohm on load okay the load that's going to be to this uh, secondary here and then I've also put a 10 ohm resistor here uh, which is in the circuit here of the resonator which is this coil here all right so we can we can actually pick up energy on this side here we can get current against that and we can get current here and uh, okay so let's get back to this here sorry kind of lost focus here um, so there we go we are at uh, 60 Hertz and we've got um, like I say 508 millivolts going across our shunt resistor and uh, the channel 2 is um, no we don't need anything of that so the other two channels there 3 and channel 4 will be our loads all right so now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and connect the uh, first load here which is our uh, secondary now we're putting a load onto our secondary from the primary and now if we look at our data there we were at uh, 508 so it's gone up a little bit uh, not too much though and we are outputting now on uh, that load that 10 ohm load uh, 577 uh, millivolts there and if you look at the scope here I'll disconnect 
I've disconnected the load and now I have connected it. One more time, disconnected, connected. Alright, so the interesting part here happens when I add this uh, re resonator here on that uh, coil here which is not directly uh, linked to this uh, uh, primary because its flux has to also go through this uh, you know uh, shaded pole rotor here or induction motor rotor to work its way back so there's going to be a delay as well here happening on that which is uh, a good thing so now I'll go ahead and I'll connect the uh, the resonator and now if we look at our data here so here this here is our resonator okay and it's outputting 483 84 millivolts there and what's happened though is our uh, secondary has shot up in uh, output so that output has increased and the other interesting thing is our shunt resistor has decreased okay so we started out at 509 idle and then it went up uh, once we connected the secondary but then when I connect the resonator on it the whole circuit uh, consumption drops down as you can see there so what I'll do right now is I'll disconnect the resonator resonator is disconnected so you can see that our our current has gone back up and our uh, secondary uh, voltage has dropped. I connect the resonator back, our secondary voltage goes up and our current goes down. So this is kind of interesting and I thought you might be uh, interested in, in these results here and uh, I'll post the scope shots as well because they're kind of bad there. So to find these uh, scope shots, you have to look at the description uh, below the video and you have to click on the link to the uh, forum topic. So I guess that's about it for now. And uh, I'll continue uh, on this uh, development here and post the videos as they come. Thanks for watching. Bye now.